Hey little churros and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing the long awaited thumbnail tutorial. I cannot tell you guys how long I've wanted to do this tutorial for, probably like over six months. I have wanted to do this tutorial for the longest time, but I've just been kind of avoiding it. Not really avoiding it, but I've been waiting for the perfect thumbnail style to show you guys how I make them. So I finally found the perfect thumbnail st style to do this with. So I thought today would finally be the day where you get the long awaited how Simply Sumi makes her thumbnails. So yeah, with that said, let's get started. So first of all, the two things that I use to make my thumbnails, I use two websites actually. I use pixlr.com slash e, and I use photop, photop, photopia, I don't know how to pronounce it. But both will be linked down in the description in case you guys wanna kind of follow along or make your own thumbnail for yourself. So first um, I use pixlr.com and I click create new and then go to full HD and you can name it. So I'm gonna name it thumbnail tut and then scroll down and click create. And then basically you wanna find a background. So it honestly depends on what aesthetic you're going for. I have a background saved in my binder that I use for all my um, thumbnails. But let's say you don't have a background, you can just go on Google and let's say you have a vintage aesthetic. So you can just search vintage aesthetic background. And then to copy, you just wanna click on the image and click on it and then click copy image and go back onto Pixlr and do command V if on Mac or control V if on PC. And then it's here and you can resize them and stuff. But since I already have one, I'm just gonna quickly load that. Okay, in. so here is my background. It's actually made by Baker Ivan. I'm really sorry if I pronounced that wrong. His channel link will be in the description. Super underrated. You should definitely go subscribe to him. So yeah, I'm literally obsessed with his background, so I use it um, like a lot. Anyways, so after you have your background, you can go up to the top, filter, details, and blur it if you want. I like to blur mine a tiny bit, but not a whole lot. I'm just gonna blur it like a tiny bit. Um, and then you just wanna click apply. And then I like to add in overlays. You can either do this before or after you add in the text, but I'm gonna be doing it before. So I'm gonna quickly add in some overlays. None of these overlays are made by me. I'll try and link the videos where I got the overlays in the description down below in case you guys wanna get the overlays for yourself. But yeah, these the people that made these overlays are so, so, so talented. You should definitely go subscribe to them. So yeah, I will be right back after I load in the overlays. Okay guys, so I've loaded in all the overlays that I use. I, again, I will try and link some of the overlays down in the description box down below. This little, I don't know what to call it, but I did not make that myself. So again, the link will be down in the description along with this ray because I found that on Google. Um, but yeah, no credit is needed. You can use them if you want. So yeah, so next what I do is I add in a GFX PNG that I've already pre-made and filtered on Polar on my phone. If you want a tutorial on that, just make sure to let me know. Um, a tutorial for how to make your GFX a PNG will be at the end of this video. So if you don't know how, you can skip to the end to find out how. So I'm just gonna be loading that in super quickly. Okay, so here is my GFX PNG. So I'm just gonna be resizing it really quickly. And then I am going to bring it above everything just so that it doesn't go below the overlays. And also I'm going to go ahead and blur the overlays. This is optional. I actually just started doing this, but I just like to blur them because then it kind of makes it look like they're in the background. Um, again, this is totally optional. I just prefer doing it. Um, so I'm just gonna be blurring them. Wait, which one? Okay. I'm just gonna be blurring them really quickly. Again, optional. I'm just going to be speeding this part up, but I will be right back after I finish blurring all the overlays. Okay, so I finished blurring all my overlays. Um, so then I'm going to be adding an outline to this GFX PNG, but before I do that, I'm gonna to go to filter and inner glow just because it has like this tiny black outline that I don't really want. So I'm just gonna be bringing this all the way down, but that kind of gets rid of the black outline that it had. Um, and then you wanna to go to filter outline and I usually like to make the first outline white um, just because I think it looks better, but you can obviously make it whatever you want. And then I'm going to go up to filter and add another outline. This is optional, but I personally think that it makes it look so cool to have two outlines. And I'm just gonna be making it a pink. Um, so yeah, I really like how that looks. I'm just gonna be resizing it a tiny bit more. Okay, 
Um, so I'm gonna be adding in one more overlay. Um, and yeah, I'll be right back after I edit. Okay, so that's gonna be the last overlay that I'm adding in. I actually just started adding this one in. It's from Floralexis video, which will be in the description box down below. It's seriously so cute. So yeah, after I finish that, um, you'll see that there's no text, but I'm doing that for a reason. So you just wanna go up to file and then save, and then you can name it whatever you want and just switch it to PNG and download it. And then you want to go on to Photo P. So I'm just going to go on there really quickly. Okay, so then once you're on here, you just wanna click open from computer and add in your thing. So I'm just gonna be finding it. Tut, thumbnail tut, okay, here we go. And then you just wanna click open and there it is. This is what I use to add my text. You can obviously also use Pixlr to add your text, but I personally prefer using this just because I really like how um, it makes the text look kind of, I don't know. Um, but yeah, to add text, you just wanna click on the text icon at the bottom, click anywhere, and then you can add the text. So I'm just gonna be writing thumb, wait, word? Okay, there it is. Okay, thumbnail. And then, oh wait, no, I'm gonna be writing how I, how, why is my typing so good? Okay, and then basically you just wanna um, resize it by just uh, selecting it and then you can resize it. I think I'm gonna be making it 300, but yeah, you can basically just resize it. And I think I'll probably change the font. Um, I have a bunch of fonts downloaded. Um, if you want a tutorial on how to do that, just make sure to let me know. But yeah, I think I'm gonna be using this font. No, okay. I'll be right back after I figure out what font I want to use. Okay, so this is gonna be the font that I'm gonna be using. I'm just gonna resize it a tiny bit more just because I like my text to be kind of big. But yeah, after you do that, you can just select the text again and you can change the color. Um, so I'm just gonna be changing the color. I think, mm, I don't really like that. I'm just gonna be changing the color and then I'll be right back, getting right back to you. Okay, so here we have this little color that I chose. I chose like a really light pink, but then basically you just want to double click on the text and then it gives you all these options. So I usually like to click bevel and Embot, emboss, I think that's how you say it. And then click on it, and then I like to also click on contour. I'm not even gonna try and pronounce these. Um, and then you just wanna change the color of that. Um, I think I'm gonna also make it a pink. Let me see, let me see. I think I'm gonna make it a pink, but basically I'm just gonna be doing that really quickly and then I will be right back. Okay, so then you can just adjust the depth and the size. So I'm just gonna be bringing mine up a lot. Um, let me put it in. And then basically you can just adjust it to your liking. And then here, I'm just not gonna do anything to it. You can also add texture to your text. Um, it doesn't really show up, but you can like add texture and then it makes your text, tex I mean, it makes your text textures, textured. Okay, why can't I speak? Um, but I'm gonna be adding a gradient um, to my text. This is obviously optional. You do not have to do this, but I just really like adding gradients to my text because I think, I mean, yeah, gradients to my text because uh, I think it makes the text look a lot better. But I'm just gonna go ahead and color the gradient and then I will be right back. Okay, so I finished um, doing the gradient. I think it looks really good. So then I just, I'm gonna click on stroke because I wanna add a stroke and for some reason the default color is red so I just wanna switch it to white. And then you can bring like the sizing up. I usually like to make it like around seven to nine but you can obviously make it as much as you want. So there we have it. That's how I make my text, but obviously you can adjust it to your liking. I'm just gonna be adding the rest of my text and then I'm just gonna be swinging this part up and get back to you after I finish that. Okay, so I finally finished. That took me like so long to find some the fonts that I liked. It usually takes me like from five to 10 minutes just to find the fonts and like if they match or not. So don't worry if it takes you long because it takes me forever. I also kind of got rid of like the ink because I wasn't sure if I liked it or not. I may like keep experimenting, but I think I'm gonna keep it without it. But then basically when you're done, um, I'm just going to add one more thing of text that I just uh, thought of. I'm gonna be adding highly, highly, 
requested. This is optional to add on to your thumbnails, but I personally think if you add in like something like highly requested or like if your viewers want to see it, like, well, I guess highly requested, but basically if you like add in anything like, I don't know, like you could add in like fun, exciting, gets crazy kind of stuff like that. I sometimes add those to my thumbnails. I don't always do that. It's just kind of like something that I sometimes do. It really honestly depends on the video. So yeah, I'm just gonna quickly finish up doing this and then I'm gonna get to the last part of what I do when I make my thumbnails. So yeah. So I actually decided not to add the like highly requested because I decided that I actually wanted to add in some previous thumbnails down here. So basically, um, you just want to go up to file, export as, and then PNG, and then just save. And then you want to go back to Pixlr and you can click toggle home and then open image. And I'm just going to be opening the thumbnail that I just made and then I like to add in some finishing touches on Pixlr obviously if you like your thumbnail as it is without adding anything else that's obviously fine too but basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding in a few previous thumbnails um, to the bottom I'll show you what it will look like in a second I'm just going to be loading in a few previous thumbnails okay so I loaded some previous thumbnails in and I just resized them actually this one as I'm recording this has not gone up I'm not sure if this one or this one will go up first but kind of a sneak peek if this one goes up first so i'm just gonna be adding an outline to um the thing but you obviously don't have to i just think that it makes it pop a little bit more and not blend in as much but obviously it's optional you do not have to do this um a lot of these steps are optional it honestly depends on what you want um so yeah, I'm just going to be adding in an outline and then I'm going to be adding in another outline. I don't know, I really like the double outline look. I think that it makes it like pop a lot more. Um, I'm just going to be sizing it down. And then there's a few more things that I like to do down to my thumbnails. My thumbnail, my thumbnails are kind of complex. Um, but yeah, so basically after I add in like some previous thumbnails or whatever I like to do, um, I don't always add in like previous thumbnails and stuff. This is just what I want to do for this thumbnail. It honestly depends, like all my thumbnails kind of like vary, I guess. So basically what I'm going to do now is add in this arrow overlay that I actually got from Rose X Kenz's video, which again, I will try and link all the videos that I got these overlays from in the description. Um, okay. So here I have this arrow and right now it's brown. So I'm just gonna be clicking select, select pixels. And then I'm going to be changing the color to a pink. And then I'm just gonna be bringing up the brush size. And then I'm gonna be adding an outline. Um, and then basically after you add the outline, I'm gonna be resizing it and pointing an arrow towards my thumbnails. Um, I like to do this on most thumbnails. Again, it's optional. Um, but yeah, it honestly just depends, but I like to add this onto a lot of thumbnails just because I think it gives it like an extra pop kind of, I guess, you know. Anyways, so I'm gonna be adding in one more overlay and then my thumbnails are complete. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be adding in one more overlay and then I'll get right back to you guys. Okay guys, so I just had to go back with the background of the ink. I don't know. Um, so I just added these little clouds. Um, so now I'm going to be adding in one last thing, which I'm going to be adding in the highly requested. And then I'm just going to be curving it. And then I like to put it on the GFX. So basically I like to like put it right there. I'm just going to be um, cutting this part out. Um, and then I'll be right back once I finish. Okay, so I decided not to add it once again, but this is how my thumbnail looks. Um, all my thumbnails kind of look different, but they have like the same theme. So yeah, just keep experimenting. It took me so long to find the style. Like, oh my gosh. I've tried so many styles to find the style. So yeah, that is going to conclude today's video. I have seriously been recording for 30 minutes. But yeah, this video will probably be a lot shorter once I edit it and stuff. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope this tutorial helped you. 
um if it did make sure to like subscribe we are so close to 2,000 subscribers which is insane so thank you guys so much for that um so yeah thank you guys so much for watching bye how to make a gfx into a gfx png so first you just want to make your normal gfx so i just pre-made this one and then on the camera icon you want to scroll down and click on transparent and then you want to scroll up a tiny bit and switch ffmpeg video to png and then click rgba and then that's basically how you do it you can turn on ambient occlusion if you want and denoising and then you just render it like normal so yeah